According to the Council for Responsible Nutrition, 75% of U.S. adults take a dietary supplement of some kind. Many people believe multivitamins are a one-step a way to get the nutrients they need. Medical reporter Rosemary Belts is here tonight to talk about some new published research that suggests vitamins and supplements may not be enough to keep you healthy. Right, well unfortunately not, but right. those numbers, so like 75% of people are taking supplements. That's up from 65% of back about 10 years ago. So confidence is up, consumerism is up, if that's a thing, and, uh, and doctors are prescribing them. Why? Because 90% of us are not eating the daily recommended amounts of fruits and vegetables. So now doctors are getting in on the action, they're paying attention to nutrition, and they're getting in on the research as well. All right, so let's talk about that research for just a moment if we can. Um, just tell, tell me, what did they find? Well, okay, so supplements are not going anywhere, right? I don't know if you notice, but when you walk into a store, there's always something popping up, something new, mm -hmm. herb, vitamin, et cetera. So the researchers at Tufts University in New England, they started to, they wanted to start examining nutrients um, and the, where nutrients play uh, a part in disease risk. And what they did was they looked at almost 30,000 adults over 11 year period, uh, over you know 20 years and older. And that research um, has just been recently published in uh, the Journal of Internal Medicine, just to taking a look at these nutrients. All right, so what if somebody is watching, taking a supplement or considering taking a supplement and they're concerned after hearing some of this news? All right, so what they found was really interesting, I thought. So right out of the gate, they thought initially that uh, the, the, the supplements uh, in decreased your chances of risk of disease. Mm -hmm. But then they looked at it a little bit further because clearly, right, we're all a little bit different. You and I, our genetic makeup, our lifestyle is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And they thought, well, maybe that this is an, an accurate assessment of, you know, if we're going to decrease disease risk. So then they broke it down a little bit more. They just looked at nutrient per se, and they looked at those values. And what they found are, you know, some vitamins uh, such as vitamin A, K, zinc, magnesium. They did show adequate levels of these vitamins uh, show decreased risk of disease. However, uh, excess levels of calcium showed an increase of cancer. So that's kind of interesting, right, when you look at these nutrients. Then they broke it down even further. Well, how are you getting? What's the source of these nutrients? They broke it down from supplements and to food. What they found was is that your disease risk decrease when you get your nutrients from food, mm -hmm. not so much from the supplements. Another interesting thought was that the calcium, the excess calcium levels, um, it didn't pertain, uh, the, the, the risks, or I'm sorry, the risks and the benefits uh, were not so much with the supplements. The, the benefits actually come from food. When people take supplements greater than 1,000 milligrams per day, that actually increased your chances of getting cancer. I know this sounds a little confusing, and a lot of this research is confusing, which is why I, I really always like to talk about it. But the bottom line is, is that our bodies digest absorb and metabolize food and nutrients much different than it does a supplement. Well, let's talk about food though. It's so easy to go through a drive through and get a 99 cent cheeseburger or some nuggets or something like that. So eating healthy, it can be expensive to balance balance everything out. It can be quite expensive. No, it can. And it's time consuming, right? Mm. And I know that. And I know everybody's probably like, how do I do this? You know, but there's a lot of there's a lot of ways. I've been there, I've done that, I live a busy life. I'm always, you know, we're all on a budget. Um, you know, contrary to belief, if you food shop, um, whether you, you know, shop in the perimeter of the grocery store, nuts, fruits, vegetables, um, discount stores, they have a, lo a much more accessible levels now of healthy mm -hmm. food, right? And you don't want to do everything at once. Um, you know, you just want to do things gradually, introduce mm -hmm. food into your, into your diet and so forth. Um, but this doesn't mean that there's no place for supplements, because if you are taking a supplement, if your doctor recommended a supplement, I just want you to, you know, pay attention to what you're taking. Look at the bottle, know what you're taking. Um, and remember, it's not regulated by the FDA. So, um, you know, you, it might, what it says that's in the vitamin might not necessarily right. be what's in the vitamin and it could conflict with your medication, right? So, and one doctor may know what you're taking, you know, maybe your cardiologist doesn't know, um, so just be mindful that, you know, you communicate this with your doctor so they know to make sure all your other medications are working properly. Um, 
And also one more thing, there is a uh, stamp of approval, even though they're not regulated by the FDA, there is a stamp of approval that you can look at on bottles. Uh, the U.S. You know, Pharmacopeia Dietary Supplement uh, you know, stamp of approval uh, that does show that, that they do have to hold up to certain standards, the amount of um, nutrient um, and what uh, some of the contaminants that could be all could right. be in there. So, All right. medical reporter Rosemarie Belts, thank you so much. You're welcome. Very informative. It, thank you. I hope so. All right. <laughs>